Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So this is the video that I've been most excited for um, over the past week or so. So I got a new car. Um, you might be able to tell, but it's a Fiat 500. So I will insert the B-roll after this that I took of the car um, just to show you like the inside and everything before we get into the tour. But I absolutely love it. Um, it's the cutest car I've ever owned. It's got quite a few add-ons so it's really nice to drive and it's also very comfortable in terms of like the screen system and all of that which we will get into um but i definitely love it and it's an upgrade from my old car um which i sold last night um after a month of it being on various websites to sell so um it's really nice to be able to go and just drive this one and not have to worry about the other one because I was getting a bit worried that no one would buy it. So um, we're going to get right into the tour. Um, I will be showing you all of the inside, all of the spec, um, going into all of the features that it has. I will be doing a very brief video under the bonnet just because I don't know anything about cars. So I'm really sorry, but um, I don't know what people want me to show them. But I definitely know that when I did my Peugeot one, people just ask to see under the bonnet so that's what I'm going to do um I don't know what you want to see in specific but um it means that hopefully you'll get a bit of an idea of what's under there and like the order of it all etc um but like I say I don't know anything about cars so I don't know what to show you exactly um but I just wanted to show you around my new car so I hope you enjoy um it's different to my usual baking content but I hope you still enjoy it and let's get right into it So this is the outside, it's a black Fiat 500 lounge, so I'm just going to take you inside to show you the interior. We'll go more in depth in this in a minute, but as you can see it's got the checkered seats which I absolutely love, and then the cream leather which again is lovely. Then we have all the cream interior, we've got a screen which I'll go into, it's the more advanced one than the standard model, so we have quite a few more features. Um, then we've got the black dash which again is so lovely, Fiat 500 logo, and then you've got the door pockets either side, and the windows are here which always throws me off, but it is actually really good because then you're not leaning to one side to do the windows, you can do it from the central station, and it also means if you want to close the opposite side then you can because otherwise it would normally be on the other door so that is the dash area and then we have the back seat so it is a four seater as you can see they're really nice big seats i think that there's so much room in there they're actually the same size i don't know if you can tell but they're the same size as the front seat so by taking out that middle seat it allows you to have bigger back seats which i think is great um it is auto which again we will get into because it's actually semi-auto um so we've got that stick there and then you've got a usb aux i've got some air fresheners this is my black box so it plugs in here and then it actually goes under the chair but that's just where it plugs in so this is the inside and we're going to get right into all of the spec and everything in a minute so this is the boot as you can see you can fit quite a lot in here i've just got my reusable bags and then this is a little seat for cleo it's like kind of like a fold out basket that goes on the front seat there and then i've just got a towel for her but as you can see it fits quite a lot in it you can probably have about four shopping bags and then you can fit above that as well because as you can see there's a bit of room so you can probably i'm going to be using it when we go to weymouth for the weekend so they'll have three very small cases so it should all fit in here and then this can be moved if you needed a bit more room so as you can see there's the back seat space there are cup holders there that is the handbrake and then we've got 
the central area in the front these are little bag hooks um so you can just people can hook their bags up on there in the back which is handy i bought those off ebay they were like three pounds so i just got those for people to hang stuff on because you have got slightly less room in the back that is just the breakdown kit it's got um various things in it that i don't even know about but um it got given with the car so that's just a little breakdown kit but yeah, we're going to go inside now. So we're now inside in the passenger seat. So I'm just going to show you a few things about how the car actually works. So it is key operated. I don't know if I can show you. There you go. So it is an um, keyless entry. So you just turn it once so we don't get copyrighted. Um, so you just turn it once for everything to come on. And it always says this. If anyone knows how to get rid of this, it always says it and you just always leave it and it goes away. Um, and then to actually turn it on, foot on the brake because it's a auto. And then it turns on like so. So I have the more advanced screen. I will try and show you a image um, maybe like here um, of the comparison of the standard screen and this one because it's definitely a lot more advanced so imagine a older car it would usually have not touch touch screen it will all be buttons down the bottom which I definitely didn't like my old car had a screen very similar to this um, where it was all touch screen it wasn't as advanced as this this definitely has a lot more options which we love um, but yeah I definitely wanted the touch screen elements with all of the kind of like add-ons I guess um, it definitely isn't standard so if you're looking for a Fiat 500 you're gonna have to look quite far because I looked at quite a few before I found this one so we've got radio then you've got media which is your mobile then you have nav which again I love um, it's TomTom -tom, um, is the kind of like system that it uses so it's a bit more advanced than my last car um, for those of you wondering who haven't watched the tour I had a Peugeot 208 and it was the Allure so it had navigation in it as standard however it would always say that the zone wasn't mapped whereas I have used this to get back from St Albans and it definitely works so um, yeah I'm really looking forward to using that when we go to Weymouth because it'll be really really handy my last one it used to occasionally um, restart so the screen would just restart which obviously when you're using navigation that's not good so it wasn't very handy then we have Uconnect, which is how you actually connect your mobile and it's also got all of the settings. Then we have iPhone, which is how you pair. So you can pair your iPhone here and see all your contacts, phone. Then Uconnect is how you kind of use your phone, if that makes sense. Um, I'm still kind of working my way around it. And then if you go to settings, you've got more details there. And then you can just scroll down here. But like I said, it's all touchscreen and then there's also trips so then you can look at your consumption um your mile per gallon you can log trips like so so you can if you know say it's like a work trip then you can log it and then you'll know how much petrol and how many miles and time etc it takes you to get to that place i don't usually really use that so we will see if i end up making any use of it but again the navigation system is not standard the person that owned this car decided to put all the add-ons on it so it meant that when i bought it it had everything it also has a dash cam which is not standard these are at 200 pounds so they didn't take that when they sold it to me luckily but again like i say that is an add-on um i would definitely recommend it because obviously if anyone crashes into you um or like say you crash into someone else it's just a log the reason it's good to have it on the front is because it's typically common um it's more so to fight your side that it's typically common that um if you were to say you were overtaking someone and they pulled out on you and you damaged the back corner of their car they would automatically assume as an insurer that you went into the back of them when obviously the dash cam would show that they pulled out on you something like that it's obviously handy to have it on the back as well but i only currently have it on the front so it's more so that if i was um 
to crash into someone and it wasn't my fault then it means i could prove it it doesn't cover me if someone crashes in the back of me because it's not on the back but that's something that i'm looking to get in the future because i definitely like having it but that is the little dash can so as you can see it just connects up here and it just goes behind here and then plugs into your system but it just sits there and records whenever you turn the car on so um this is how you scroll and tune we're not going to press it i don't think it always unmutes um so then you've got the on and off button so if you wanted to you can just turn it off and then you can put the brightness on and off if we turn it and then if you press this once it comes back on then that turns the screen off and then you can turn it back on. I'm not quite sure when you would need to use that, but it's definitely handy to have. Then you've got your aircon system here. So I love aircon, I can't live without it, especially when delivering cakes. So you've just got hot and cold. It's a bit old fashioned in this sense, the fact that you have dials, but the actual productivity of your aircon or like the way that it works is very very good so that's why i wasn't put off um because i definitely remember in my first car when i had dials like this however the aircon did not work it was non-existent whereas this all works very very well so that's why i don't mind my last car had digital and then you just typed in the um degree that you wanted it but obviously this one works perfectly fine so you just turn it like so pretty standard but the way that this one works is that is aircon when it's got the little snowflake and then you press it in and that's no longer aircon so it still puts out cold air but obviously aircon is very cold and cold air can be maybe like i don't know 16 degrees and then the aircon goes lower than that um then we have i believe that is like the city um steering wheel where it makes your steering wheel a lot more loose i never use it and i don't want to press it just in case i end up leaving it on then you have your hazards and then you have your full beams so that's actually quite interesting because they're not on mine are usually on here but that's how you can flash people um if you want to like let them go or if you just need to put your full beams on i usually only use them when i'm flashing people to let them go um because i never really drive at night um then you've just got your various circulation so this one means it's taking air from inside the car and then this one it takes it from outside the car so it's kind of like fresh air um but if you just want to circulate the same air then you can use that then you've just got face aircon face and feet just feet and then that is the fans onto your feet and then that is just this section up here um to do your dash um and then i'm not sure what these mean um this one i believe is your back window um and then that one is stop and start but i don't know what asr is and i believe that's your airbag um but yeah it has got stop and start so it means it doesn't do it when you're obviously like parked um but it does do it if you are at traffic lights and it'll wait i don't know like maybe 10 seconds and then it'll just stop and then the light will appear down here so as you can see it's only done 20,000 miles which we love um that was one of the main reasons i got it because it was really low mileage and because it is finance for four years it means that when i give it back it's not going to have too many miles on it um as you can see we're currently in neutral and it's in auto so if i show you we're just this is what you would drive in um so you would have it in neutral but then this is where you have it when you drive so neutral is when it's parked because it doesn't have a parked then you have reverse so you just move it like that reverse and then if you move it to one side like so then you can see it goes into first um but if you just leave it like that again then it goes back into auto my dad just got home so he, um he just quickly interrupted the tour but let's get back into where i was i think i was showing you all of the dash so we're going to go and start there so i'm just going to come back to this section of the dash so you've got your two windows which is always really good because obviously if there is no one in that side of the car then i'm not going to be able to reach or actually i can but it wouldn't be safe to reach um so yeah you've got both your windows here um this light was actually showing which i believe means that the passenger airbag isn't on so i'm gonna youtube that and set that so that it is on um these are actually fog lights my dad just corrected me 
um i'm used to having my fog lights on the actual stick but in this car they're press ones which i much prefer because in my old car they were very difficult you had to have your lights on auto and then you'd have to like pull the stick towards you do loads of stuff whereas obviously this is a lot easier you just press the button so we have our little um glove box here i've just got some air fresheners and then we've got two here this one actually isn't working anymore i just think it's cute and then jelly bean um and then we just got a like when it's misty um on your dash like on the windscreen then you can just use that to wipe it i need to get some cloths for when it's icy later in the year then you have the book log book um down here i've just got a foil mat um it's kind of like a sheet um and i believe because my dad gave it to me that i can put it on the windscreen um when it's frosty and then it will reduce the amount of ice that's on my windscreen it won't completely stop it but it's meant to help apparently um so on the side here is where you have your windows so this is how you switch sides so when it's on this side it's this window and then when it's this side it's that window um i had this on one of my other cars and it's fairly simple to navigate so you literally just push like that and then i don't know if you can oh yeah wrong one wrong mirror put that back up so as you can see the mirror is moving inside out so yeah that's just how you do that um it has got lock here so as you can see that's locked and then you just go like that to unlock it which i really like because it's really discreet um i always like to lock the car when i'm sat in it because i get worried so it just means you can just go like that car's locked nothing to worry about so yeah and then you just go like that to unlock it which is all good um so as i said you've got your little usb aux here if you want to plug in your phone rather than using bluetooth if you don't have any battery then you can do that um so here you have all your warning lights going around the edge obviously i've got no warning lights so um that's why none of them are lit up then you've got your speed around the edge this bit you can customize i haven't got to that yet but i do want to have my speed in big letters on there at some point um and that's obviously where your gears are date time this is your fuel if you don't know that little arrow means that it's on the driver's side so it basically means whether your um what is it petrol cap is on the left or right so if you don't know then that's where you look um I haven't gotten a seat belt on so that's why that's up and that's for the handbrake this little light over here this is how you change the display i'm not familiar with that yet so i won't be doing anything but that is how you kind of navigate it um and then on the inside you've got your revs um which if you're familiar with manual cars you'll know that when you sort of get to three and four on the rev count then you need to be going up a gear whereas obviously on a um, auto it does it all for you um if you're using the semi-auto then you will need to know how to use that so that is everything in regards to the dash then just on the wheel you've got um i believe that's hands free then you've got mute volume up volume down your horn which we won't press horn either side this is how you change song that's how you answer the phone and that's how you put down your phone using hands free um so we're going to turn off the engine now because we don't need that anymore so i wanted to show you this light because i really like these types of lights like the system um so this is when the doors open or you've just turned off the car it lights up and allows you time to get out the car as you can see it turns off then you have on if you just want it to stay on and then you have standard and then you can turn it off completely which is that way and then it won't come on at all whereas if you have it on in the middle then it means that if you open your doors it will come on then you do have an extra light in here which is always good you have a mirror that side but obviously you don't have a mirror this side because it would probably promote you to check your appearance while you're driving and obviously you do have this section here if you needed it then we have a sunroof which i love it's one of my favorite things about the car so what you do is you just go like that clip it in and then you've got a bit more kind of like shade um i use it like this if it's sunny and then i open it up when it's not sunny because it adds extra light you can't open it at all which i don't mind because 
it prevents any like leakage issues because like convertibles and things usually sometimes have leakage issues so it means that you don't have to worry about that because there's no opening so you just clip that back in and um, then you have little hooks around here on that side and also on that side i have bought extra ones i got these off ebay just to hang your handbags on um, on the backs of the seat and then as you can see you've got your two seats i've pushed the headdresses right down but they do go up higher than that do not worry um, and then we have our seat belts you can put these seats down there is a little clip right by that seat belt and you just push it and then you can put the seats down for extra room so that's always handy then you have your speakers in the door obviously it's a three door so these doors do not open and you open the back seats here and you just pull this like that and then you pull the chair towards you and you've got the same on this side like so and then pull the chair towards you and it will open and then it just slides the chair forward and then your passengers can get in the back We've got the cup holders, as mentioned previously. In this model, which I got, it's not standard, but you have got mats. Um, so these are the official Fiat 500 mats, which again is a really nice addition. Then down there, you have your um, bonnet opener. I will give you a quick tour of the bonnet because I know with my last car tour, people really wanted to see under the bonnet. I obviously don't know anything about cars, but I will give you a quick once over of the bonnet so that you can have a look. Um, so, that is everything, I believe, in regards to the car. Um, just a simple thing. If you want to close and open your vents, that's how you do it. Um, but apart from that, I believe that is everything about the car. I'm going to have a little look through the logbook to cover anything that I might not know. But this is the inside of my car. I absolutely love it. It is so cute and I love the auto. I definitely recommend it to any manual drivers. So I'm going to turn you around and give you a little outro. So guys, I hope you loved seeing my new car. I've had it for about a week and a half, um, but I haven't done a car tour because I've been just busy um, baking and various other things. And also I was trying to sell my other car, which actually went yesterday. So after that sold, it sold within like an hour. So basically I listed it like a month ago and I had just loads of interest but nothing properly like no serious interest and then last night someone messaged me saying is the car still available can I view it tonight I said yes of course and then they came and view it bought it straight away um and that was that so they collected it yesterday so it was sold and gone yesterday evening so that was really nice it was just like a weight off my shoulders because obviously i'm paying for two cars so i wanted to get rid of it as quick as i could because i've currently got this car which i'm paying for and then i was also paying for that one which i will be paying off and then no longer have to worry about so i was getting a little bit worried that no one was going to buy it but um yeah luckily we have a buyer and it's all sorted now so i don't have to worry about it um but that's kind of why i was like oh i'll do the car tour now because um i felt like i could kind of like rest easy because because I had sold it. Um, also, there is something that I want to mention about the windscreen, which I've forgotten. Um, so I will insert that in a minute. Um, but yeah, so this is my new car and I absolutely love it. Um, it's really nice and quirky. I like the shape of it and everything. Um, Fiat 500s, I've always wanted one but um, I never had the money and I also always went for something cheaper and also because I always wanted a little runaround whereas I was like maybe I should treat myself to a nice car that I really like not something that I just want to run around in so I absolutely love it and I just love the interior it's my favorite thing um that and the sunroof is my favorite thing about the car and the fact that it's also so there's just so many things that i love about it um but yeah i'm gonna show you under the bonnet now and also show you the windscreen because i feel like it's something to mention because it is a three door so it definitely makes a difference so i'll quickly show you that what i wanted to mention about the windscreen is how wide it is so i don't know if you can tell but this is sort of maybe the normal width that you would get but as you can see you've got a bit extra either side so this pillar is very very small um in my last car it probably came to about here which obviously obstructs your view quite a bit um so i definitely think it makes a difference having it further out um so yeah i do really like 
the fact that it's a lot wider it definitely gives you a nice view especially when people are coming around the roundabout because there's a roundabout by my house which i used to always not be able to see at and it's where someone's coming around the roundabout from over there and you're going straight and i can't see them so i would really have to lean around this pillar here but this one because i think it's partly the fiat design but also because it's a three door and then you'll also be able to tell but the side windows are really big again usually four no five door cars will finish about here but because it's three door the windows are a lot bigger so it means that you have a lot more viewing space which i definitely like um it just means that your view isn't obstructed and yeah it's a lot easier to drive in it definitely makes a difference i haven't had a three door for about three years so i am loving it because it's definitely something that i missed but yeah, like I say, the front is such a nice big window. Even my mum said the same thing when we drove home in it. Um, but yeah, it definitely makes a difference having that nice big window. So just a quick look under the bonnet. Um, how are we? There we go. Can't do it with one hand. So which side is the little... So down here you've got there you go put that in there and then i know people wanted to see under the bonnet in my last car so i just thought i would give you a little tour but like i say i don't know anything about cars i think that's the battery um then you've got your um i don't know what that is sorry um we've got i believe this is radiator screen wash um this is your oil so you'll have a dipstick in there um your dipstick is here so that's how you check how much you've got in your oil tank um so this is engine oil um if i'm saying that correctly and then yeah like i say that's your dipstick to check how much you've got in there um so yeah and then obviously you've got the main engine so i'm hoping that this covers any questions because i know people wanted to see under the bonnet but they didn't say specifically when i did my peugeot tour so i thought i'd just give you a little once over so that you can see what it looks like so yeah that is the bonnet and then like i say that's how you just take it out i can't do it with one hand there we go so and then that just clips in down there and you just put it back down so that is everything for this video i hope you enjoyed if there's any questions you have about it please feel free to put them down below i know it's different to my usual types of videos um but i'm hoping you enjoyed because it is my new run around so it is relating to me and it's kind of like a life update um but yeah let me know if you've got a fiat 500 what you think of it and also whether you have any questions about the model anything about this particular one because i know that it's got quite a few add-ons than the standard model so definitely feel free to ask anything because there might be something that's on my car which won't be on the standard ones so yeah if you want me to check anything for you please feel free to comment it down below if you haven't already please like subscribe and hit the bell and you'll be notified about all my new videos bye guys